If Death's Door were applying for the role of an essential top-down action adventure, it would have quite an impressive resume, with its Zelda-like exploration and dungeon puzzles, engaging fast-paced combat, and levels that are brimming with irresistible secrets. All of this is wrapped up in a world that definitely walks the line between somber and charming. Its varied yet muted areas are full of quiet melancholy, creating a sense of wonder and mystery that proves hard to resist uncovering every last hidden path on your way to reap some souls. The premise for Death's Door is straightforward yet intriguing. Get to work for the Reaping Commission by harvesting the giant soul of a monster unwilling to submit to the mortal coil. However, after the soul is unexpectedly stolen from you, your path leads to a hauntingly beautiful undying realm that holds the titular Death's Door. To open it, you'll need to search the lands for three powerful souls in need of a good reaping, by way of some entertaining and challenging boss fights. Exploring these forgotten lands is a treat. I tracked my quarry through forbidden graveyards, old flooded ruins, and creepy mansions. Puzzles are plentiful, and while most plan familiar themes of hitting switches, collecting keys, and opening gates, they were all slightly varied and progressively challenging enough to never overstay their welcome. Death's Door makes smart use of its terrain to guide your progression, whether requiring you to crisscross through areas to activate checkpoints, or using layered walkways to give new perspective to solving puzzles and uncovering mysteries. And plenty of mysteries there are, because Death's Door crams secret pathways into every region, there might not be an overwhelming variety of rewards to find, but the lure of exploration is so omnipresent it was hard for me not to stray from the main path to see what I was missing. Even after my 10-hour adventure was over, an even bigger enigma completely held my attention until I'd exposed everything it had to offer. When not lighting torches and activating platforms, my little Reaper Crow was up to his beacon enemies to slice and dice through. Combat in Death's Door is as decisive as it is quick. Opponents are rarely slow by most attacks, which means combat involves figuring out how aggressive you can be before things get painful. Death's Door may rely a lot on throwing waves of enemies at you to slow you down, but it's thanks to the aggressive and rapid pace of these fights, and a smattering of varied weapons to collect and swap between, that I never got tired of looking forward to the next gauntlet. Added to the mix are a few magic abilities you unlock in each dungeons, which are part puzzle solving tool and part weapon. While you'll only get a few limited uses in either application, recharging your magic is as simple as whacking anyone or any destructible object nearby. This made for fun and engaging combat where I can intersperse quick magic attacks between melee strikes if I time things well. When it comes to dungeon delving, developer Acid Nerve has created a very enjoyable sense of progression in Death's Door. Each of the three main regions I explored followed similar rhythms. Large, open introductory zones leading to confined dungeons where enemies take a backseat to puzzles. This in turn led down a path to acquire a major magical upgrade, as you'd expect from a Zelda-like dungeon, but only after proving yourself worthy. I just wish the process didn't boot you out of the dungeon, as it slightly hampered the flow. All of this leads up to a final inner sanctum moment in the run-up to the boss of the region, and that's where you'll have to quickly adapt to taking on greater numbers of enemies and even doing a bit of puzzle solving at the same time. Much like the more somber initial areas, the tension in these segments is further accentuated by some excellent faster paced music that urged me onwards. The bosses of Death's Door themselves are a delight, and most would find themselves quite at home in a top-down Zelda game. They mix cartoonishly evil charm with some impressive attacks that often require me to put my knowledge of the dungeon's mechanics to the test to come out on top. Despite one of the later bosses not having as much of a lasting impact as the others, the major curveball thrown in the finale made the whole experience a memorable one. While friendly faces in these lands are few and far between, the comedic timing of the few allies I met were a mood lightning counterpart to combat the gloomy undertones of my soul reaping task. Whether it's a corpse controlling squid serving seafood, or a cheeky yet meaningful eulogy given after defeating a boss, I appreciate these bits of levity immensely. Death's Door is a must for those looking to scratch the itch of a classic Zelda dungeon delving game, with the added bonus of impeccable combat against waves of foes in a creepy world. Secrets are plentiful enough to offset the low variety of rewards, and the cohesion of puzzle solving and combat encounters work terrifically to challenge me in all the right ways. While I wish the adventure didn't end so soon, as a Reaper of Souls, I should know, nothing lasts forever. For more, check out our reviews of The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD and Wildermyth. And for everything else, stick with IGN.